What's up and welcome back to my channel. I'm Diana, creator of Money Boss Mama and in this video I'm going to be giving you guys some tips and tricks to really stick to your budget like for real this time. I know that creating the budget is like the easy part but the grueling part is really sticking with it. So I'm going to be giving you guys some tips to help you really stick to your spending plan so that you can reach your financial goals. First thing is a biggie. This is the magic juice. If you leave out of this video with nothing else, please take my advice on this one. And that is to identify and redirect your spending triggers. And I say this is a big one because money management is 20% knowledge and 80% behavior, y'all. If you try to take mindset out of the equation, you're not gonna really get that far financially because the way we manage our money is always gonna be in alignment with how we naturally maneuver through this world, right? Our behavior. Based on how you naturally behave, that is how you are going to manage your money if you are not really mindful about how you behave and your spending triggers could literally be anything it could be your crappy job that you hate that toxic relationship it could be you being stuck in traffic you being bored or you trying to hold on to this happy feeling literally anything and if you don't know what your spending triggers are and create a way to redirect those bad habits then you're not really going to get that far with your budget you're not going to stick with it and that's because your triggers those triggers have full control over how you're managing your money and i once heard in a podcast that i was listening to that if you cannot think greater than how you feel then your feelings have become the means of thinking. And that is that was so profound because it's the same thing with your finances. If you cannot get a hold of your spending triggers, then your spending triggers will always be in control of how you manage your money. And I like to think of it this way. Whenever I'm thinking of my spending triggers and the habits that they create, um, it goes, I think this was in the four atomic bomb, four atomic bomb, whatever. It teaches you how habits are formed. I'll leave it on the screen, but it goes through cue, craving, response, reward. So this is how I want you guys to really sit down and think about your spinning triggers and the routines that they are creating. There is a fly that is just trying to be in my video. Okay, but anyway. So your cue is like the trigger. What starts that routine that you have? And let's use an example of being stuck in traffic because this was literally a problem that I had or a routine that I had. So my cue was being stuck in traffic. Who likes being stuck in traffic in the morning when you're trying to get to work? It leaves you frustrated and overwhelmed. And let's say you're stuck in traffic and you're always coming up by this Starbucks and you smell the coffee. So your craving is coffee. You want to get off of the highway and go and get a cup of coffee. So in our queue is being in traffic and being pissed off that we're in traffic. Our craving is coffee because we see a coffee shop on the side and we're smelling the coffee. And then we go into response. What is your response to this craving? And let's say that your response is you getting off the highway to go to get in the Starbucks line. And that's because not necessarily that you want a cup of coffee, but it's what those triggers or whatever it is that you're trying to get is what they embody. So you don't go out and get a combo meal because you wanted the combo meal. You want it to satisfy your hunger. And so let's say the cup of coffee symbolizes you trying to relieve stress and you want to feel more awake and alert before you go into work. And so that becomes your reward. Your reward to me 
is that whole entire routine of you being in traffic, getting pissed off, seeing a coffee shop, smelling the coffee, wanting to feel more alert and less stress. So you go and you pick up the coffee and that becomes your entire routine. And if you are not mindful of these things going forward and begin to implement new routines to go into to break these bad habits, they will continue to wreak havoc on your budget. We set these amounts. That does not mean that we're going to stick to them and we're not going to stick to them until we begin to redirect our bad habits. And if you're not quite sure what your spending triggers are, I always, always recommend taking a trip down memory lane, going back to your childhood, because a lot of our habits and our beliefs about money they stem from childhood, our experiences and our observations growing up. No matter how you try to put it, your experiences and observations have had some type of impact on how you manage your money. Like if you heard your mom say, we never have enough money, you may have this internal belief that, you know, money is scarce. You'll never have enough money. There will never be enough money. And that becomes like an unconscious belief that you have in your mind. And so it comes out through your actions. So you may not even really stick to the budget because you really don't believe that there will ever be enough money to help you reach your financial goals. Like it can be you picking up a habit that maybe your uncle had and you were around your uncle uh, a lot of times growing up. And it's not until you begin to really go back, even if it's painful, it's not until you begin to go back and really be introspective that you begin to gain power and authority over those spinning triggers, over those habits, and over those beliefs. And then you're bringing the unconscious into the conscious because we can't change what we don't know, right? But when you do this, you're bringing the unconscious into the conscious so that you can consciously begin to redirect those habits and those beliefs to ones that are actually going to be um, supportive of your goal. The next tip that I have for you guys is to stop copying and pasting someone else's budget. And I know this is really easy for budgeting beginners. Like you see maybe people budgeting on YouTube or Instagram and you want to kind of copy what they're doing because in your mind you're kind of just like, well, it's working for these people and they're actually able to stick to their budget. I'm over here feeling like I'm failing, so it should work for me, right? Wrong, 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 because your budget is your own unique spending plan. It's your own personalized spending plan that are based on your factors. There are different factors that come into play whenever you are creating your budget. That's your income, your goals, your expenses, um, just your values overall. And those things are going to be very different from person to person. Just because this person excels with this budget app or this spreadsheet does not mean freaking fly. Does that mean that you are going to excel using these things because your behavior is different? And going back to, you know, tip number one, you've got to take how you naturally are into consideration whenever you are budgeting. The next tip that I have for you is to create a strategy to actually stick to your budgeted amounts. So if you thought that the budget was the end all be all, you thought that was the strategy, wrong. Your budget is just your plan. You actually need to develop a strategy to stick to the amounts that you put in your budget. So if you say that you are going to budget $100 every two weeks to eat out, how are you actually going to do that? Did you actually write down a plan or a strategy to stick to that $100? And if you have it, that might be why you have not been able to successfully stick to it or it's been very overwhelming, confusing and frustrating in regards to why you have not been able to do it. You actually need a plan so that whenever you sit down and do your budget reviews, you have something written down to evaluate and actually readjust. We're not going to know what's working and what's not working 
if we don't even know really what we're doing. So going back to the $100 eating out example, let's say that we put that in our budget. Our plan could look like designate two eat out days per day, Friday and Saturday, or you can pick different days, maybe Wednesday and Thursday. And then we eat at home for the other days. Whenever we actually do go out to eat, we are only going to get like the main thing. We're not going to get any sides or any drinks. And on the days that we are eating out, we're going to eat the other two meals of the day at home. That's just off the top of my head. But of course, give yourself time to actually go through the amounts that you feel like are going to be really, really challenging for you to stick to and create a written plan to stick to those amounts and you can break up that written plan into little milestones so what do you need to do to stick to this hundred dollars every two weeks and then break those up into even smaller chunks to make it more manageable and a lot less overwhelming and then when you go back to check your amounts you can actually compare whatever went wrong to your plan go through your plan readjust whatever you need to readjust and make it work for you that is the thing that i want you guys to understand your budget is going to be a trial and error process you're not going to get it perfectly the first few times the first 10 times probably the first 20 times some months are going to be really good and some months are going to be really bad that's because you are now getting adjusted to sticking to specific amounts for specific things it took me years to get my budgeting down now it's second nature but i struggle for like a year and a half but whenever you guys come over budget or you feel like you failed don't quit stay consistent because really whatever went wrong you need those things so you take your failures and use it as feedback to tweak your strategy and it makes it stronger and as you go on allow yourself to adjust your budget it's not set in stone it should never be set in stone it's always going to be changing and you need that feedback to help you create and strengthen your strategy but i hope that you guys really enjoyed this video leave additional tips and tricks down below and if you have any questions leave them down below as well and i will catch you guys in the next one